This is my new 2003 Lincoln Town Car. It is the signature series, the, the signature trim. Um, and it's obviously a pretty clean car. Um, and the wheels are a little rough, as you can see. But, honestly, I have zero complaints about this car so far. So, you may be wondering why I came home with a Lincoln Town Car out of any car. You know, normally I like to have the, you know, sporty cars, you know, the big V8 with uh, rear-wheel drive, manual transmission, the sports cars, the fast cars. But, you know, that Mustang I had, had its fair share of, you know, gremlins, of electronics, of engine problems, really anything you can think of. It just, it was just round after round of expensive repairs, and I, it was just time to get rid of it. You know, in addition to all those problems, it had its plenty of rust it was not getting any better it was just a poor investment but so a guy came up to me he uh, reached out on Facebook and he said well I have a Lincoln Town car to trade if you're interested and I said absolutely you know I'm gonna come see it and I did so you can see it is the signature trim which is the lowest trim level I believe um, these cars, they all came with the 4.6 liter modular V8. They made around 239 horsepower. I'm not quite sure about the torque number. But, you know, these cars weigh pretty much every bit of 5,000 pounds. It does not go. But really, you don't care in this car. It is so floaty. It's got the air ride suspension. And really, I mean, it's such a perfect highway cruiser. And you really have no desire to go fast in it. I mean, it's just so relaxing. So, yeah, just relaxing. You know, it's blissful. It's floaty. And it's got the V8. You can pass people if you need to. But really, you don't care to. You're just incredibly comfortable. And it's got this two-tone, whatever color that is. But, you know, I think it looks great. The wheels obviously could use some attention. You know, it looks like someone just decided to drive alongside a curb, not caring about what it did to the wheels. It's on all of them. It's got this little spot right here, but really it's not the end of the world. It is heads and shoulders better than this Mustang. Everything works pretty much. I mean, there are a couple little things that, you know, aren't perfect, but look at these back seats. My car is locked. Okay, all right. Now look at these back seats. It's got the Lincoln right there. You know, normally you typically see that in front seats. It's got this little storage compartment here, this ashtray, these handles again, and then this leather, this beautiful leather, just your hand sinks right into it. It is incredibly comfortable. And it is so quiet. It is so quiet. On the inside of this car you know there is this loud diesel idling right there and you can barely hear it you can barely hear it you have the climate in the back and then you have this nice armrest in the middle unfortunately there is no storage compartment here you just have your cup holders and I believe on the long wheelbase version there is like a an instrument panel here that allows you to adjust the climate and also it allows you to move this seat forward. Obviously, you can't move the driver's seat. But it is more tailored towards, you know, the people being driven rather than the driver on this short wheelbase version. But yeah, I mean, you can see how spacious even the short wheelbase ver version is and how nice, really, the interior is for how cheap you can get into these cars. I mean, it is plenty of room. That steering wheel is beautiful. You really just can't beat it. It's got, you know, truly exceptional technology for its day in 2003. It comes with this very, very nice leather. These seats are incredibly comfortable. Let me hop in real quick. And the first thing you notice is all of this beautiful wood. All the beautiful wood. It looks great. The wooden steering wheel on the top. In the bottom, you can tell it's meant to last because they put the wood on the top so it doesn't crack, the leather doesn't crack in the sun. And I really, really like this steering wheel. 
It has plenty. It has your cruise control settings over here, and it has your volume, your radio, and then also your climate control right there at right in reach. Also, you have the shifter on the column like an old minivan or a truck, which it is very, I mean, I can't complain. Um, it actually helps the, the, uh, the front seat to feel more roomy because you have all of this room. And in fact, you can put three people up front. You can see it has an extra seat belt here. Instead of having a handle, say, on here to close the door, you actually have this, this handle there. It's really something kind of unique. And uh, in addition on the door, it has the Mercedes-like seat controls and the seat warmers, which is uh, surprising for 2003, especially in an American car. And it also has this very spacious secret compartment almost there. In addition to the nor the typical compartment you'd see at the bottom of the door. Another interesting feature on the interior of this car is that is this glove box, which actually folds up as a seat, as the back of a seat. But it opens from this side and reveals plenty of room. You can see I have some of my personal stuff in there. But you can close it and then you can also open it from this side as well. Another interesting compartment in this car is this, which you can put, you know, your change, has this little cigarette lighter. It's still there, still gets hot. Um, very nice. Sorry, I'm looking at the camera. I can't fit it back in. But yeah, it you know, more room for whatever you want, change or really anything. There's just a, so much, so much room in this car. So now that I'm on, in the car with the car running, it, I can give you a better idea of what the instruments are actually like. So you don't have a tachometer, tachometer in this car, I'm sorry, um, but it does give you a digital gauge and a, you know, a tr more traditional gauge of your speed. Uh, you've got your temperature and then you have your gas, of course, and obviously I need to go get gas. But I don't know if this, this is um, typical to me. It says that you should be getting better gas mileage than I'm currently getting, but it's an old car. I don't know, but I'm only getting 12.5 miles per gallon right now. And also you have, you have this select button, which it can show you different things. You know, your distance to empty, 66 miles until I need to go fill up. Your average speed, 18 miles per hour. Your trip length, whatever that is, your speed, and then your fuel economy. And then you have your clock here. It does not give you a digital clock, but this is pretty classy if you ask me. And you move it with these buttons, forward and backwards. And then you have this nice radio. It's actually very nice for the age. Um, Got to find a channel that's not actually, you know, it doesn't sound like garbage. But, you know, fairly high quality. I mean, you can't really complain, especially for a, especially for a 2003 car. It has the auto climate control. You can turn it off. It tells you the exterior temperature as well as the temperature in the car. You can control it here, your fan, your, uh, your temperature. You have these pretty uh, typical settings where you can put your heat or AC. And obviously this to make it you know go on both sides because both sides of the car does have control over you know each like the climate you have the um you have your vents here 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 and then you have two in the back seat and i think that is all of them but another thing is you have it tells you that your direction and if you hit this mode button it'll tell you your oil life or it'll tell you nothing but i like that i like to keep it at it spells it all out for you. Doug DeMiro took, made a note of that. And I really think that is kind of interesting. So that is another quirk and feature, as Doug DeMiro likes to say.
Another thing is it has this visor here. You can move it. You can move it back into this position. You also have a second one here, so you have pretty much full, you know, protection from the sun. It does not. It does not shift back. I know some people like that, but that is about it for the interior. <laughs> pretty elegant, pretty classy for 2003. And I really don't see why you wouldn't consider this if you're considering a, you know, an S class or a seven series. So the next thing I want to show you is the trunk. So just with the click of a button, it comes right up. On other videos I've seen of this car, it came up all the way. I don't know if it is just broken or, you know, something's not working right. And also when you hit it again, it would come down. I just hear a clicking noise. I can't tell if it's broken or if it's just, it did not come in this version, but you could see how much room is truly back here. You know, people always make the joke, oh, you can fit, you know, three bodies in this trunk or whatever. And you, I mean, you really could. You've got the uh, spare tire in here, you got the jack. Um, the previous owner's Rain X. Did not know that was in there, but. Yeah, I mean, and then you have this CD changer back here. And then this is another interesting um, feature of this car is you have this off button in here. And in order to jack it up, you have to turn this butt, you have to turn it off, which that is your air suspension. You know, if you jack it up with the air suspension still on, I don't know what exactly it'll do, but it could throw it out of whack and it could end up costing you money. But... You know, nothing special in it for a trunk, but it is just absolutely massive. So, I almost forgot to mention on this trunk, obviously you can slam it closed, but also it has the soft close, where if you just set it in position, it'll pull itself down automatically. So, under the hood of this 03 Lincoln Town car, you have a modular 4.6 liter single overhead cam V8, it makes 239 horsepower and 287 pound-feet of torque. And you have, you got a brand new battery. It is really basically the same thing you get out of the Mustang. You get out, obviously, of the uh, police interceptor. But, you know, it is really a reliable engine. You know, I say that. I hope I'm not jinxing myself because I did have a 4.6 out of my Mustang that was actually very, very unreliable. But, that was most likely because I purchased, this, purchased it, you know, with a ton of performance modifications, and it really probably threw off its reliability. But here you have a bone stock, 4.6 liter V8. Doesn't, I mean, it doesn't make a whole lot of power, but, you know, it has a lot, and I mean a lot of car to push. Another interesting thing, it has this little light under the hood. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know what the use of that is, obviously, if you're working on your car in the dark. But I cannot see your typical town car owner, you know. Obviously, it has some uses, but that's just pretty interesting, if you ask me. So, we're going to slam the hood. It's got this little thing to put the, pull the hood up. It doesn't have a latch under here. This just pops out when you uh, pull the button. Obviously, you have this nice little hood ornament. Pretty elegant front end, if you ask me. So, obviously, this car, like any car, has its um, ticking time bombs, you could say. So, with it being a an airbag suspension system, you know, typically, you see those often going out. And, um, you know, you look like you're a squatted pickup truck, you know, with the rear end of your car just, like, almost dragging so that is one of the things that typically you know if something's going wrong in one of these cars it's typically that the compressor goes out your shocks are leaking whatever it may be that is something to keep an eye on for in this car luckily luckily and fingers crossed knock on my wood steering wheel I don't have to deal with any of those problems because I am sick I am sick of dealing with car problems 
But those are the couple of things to watch out for. You know, this particular example has 114,000 miles. So far, so good. Um, I've almost put 1,000 miles on it since I've had it. I just love driving it. Which, that brings me to how it performs on the road. You know, it's truly fantastic, if you ask me. It, uh, it just floats. It is truly an elegant car, almost. I mean, it it's incredibly relaxing to drive. You have no desire. No desire. And I, I drive with a lead foot. I admit. But you have no desire to really speed in this car. I don't know if that's because it's difficult to. Because it weighs 5,000 or so pounds. But, it, 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 you know, you just... You're completely content driving it slow. Driving it like, you know, an old man or whatever. Because, you know, stereotypically it's an old man car. You know, it's just very relaxing. You could fall asleep in these seats. I don't know if that, you know, knocks it or is a benefit of it, but you know, these new these new luxury cars are all you know, they all have these bolstered seats. They're all sporty in their own way. This car is none of that. None of that, and I think that is a key feature of it. I think that's what makes it truly enjoyable. They made these from 2000 this particular generation uh, they made these from 2003 to 2011. They didn't see a whole lot of changes. Um, you know, it's obviously the same Panther platform you'd see in the Crown Victoria, the Marauder, you know, cars like that. Um, it's the same platform at the body on frame construction. You know, just like you see in trucks and SUVs these days. And it's really kind of the last of its kind. So... I am back home, and before I hand the keys over to Harrison to get his take on this car, you know, I just want to say that this car has its own personality. It, um, you know, acts a certain way, it drives a certain way, of course, and I don't think I'd want it any, any other way. You know, this car, it shifts slow, it you know, gets up to speed relatively slow. And I think that's just, you know, how the car is meant to be. You know, it's got the four-speed automatic. And I would say you could probably count a second off between, you know, the shifts, you know. And I think that just that just adds to the character of the car. Normally that would be, you know, a, a detriment to a car. But with this... You know, it adds to the relaxation, adds to the leisure of driving this car. And it's not exciting, it's not fun necessarily, but it's just, it's just relaxing, elegant, leisurely. And that's what makes it fun. That's what makes this car fun. Not, you know, it's zero to 60 or not it's, you know, ability to get sideways or blow other cars doors off or it's exhaust note it truly you know none of that it is so quiet in here it has a nice radio you know nice suspension it is just fun relaxing and almost blissful to just drive you know i would not mind you know packing up and taking a you know six hour trip in this car right now just because it is so relaxing i mean i wouldn't want to pay the gas bill for that but driving this car long distance i took it up to ann arbor the other day it was probably about i don't know we probably spent like two hours in this car and not that that's long but that is truly not a problem it was really actually enjoyable you know i could sit here and listen to a podcast or listen to music and really not worry you know just be relaxed and enjoy the drive. You know when you when you say some stuff, when you when you when you call someone out on the internet and get in a fight, like uh, an Xbox Live, I hate you, I don't like you, and some other words. It's cool, it's funny, it's really cute at times. But when he says, I'm pulling up, and he pulls up in this Lincoln Town car. That is the last day you will probably ever, ever see. So, 
This car is for two clientele. The people who drive to church or the people driving to Mexico with two kilos of whatever type of white powdered substance in the trunk of this car. And the crazy part is, if they get pulled over with 50 kilos in the trunk, there's so many places to put it that when the trunk goes up, you could put it under the liner, not even notice, not even notice. So it's crazy because Ford already knew you were going to use this car to push drugs to, to the border from Sunnyside, Ohio. So you don't even have to already modify this because Ford is a dope dealer at the end of the day. They are. That's just what they are. They're not a car manufacturer. They're deep down a dope dealer because they want you to push drugs in this Lincoln. Now, occasionally, the town car owner will take it to bingo. But yeah, but that's a front. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It's a front because they want to think this is an old person's car. But in reality, this car is 30 years ahead of Porsche, 40 years ahead of Mercedes, and about 90 years ahead of Kia because Ford already has this stuff figured out. They got the front, they got the gas mileage down, they got reliability down, they got performance because it's a freaking V8, even though it is the slowest V8 God has ever laid eyes on, it's still a V8. At the end of the day, you got a V8 drug pushing Lincoln that does modern horsepower, modern fuel economy, and a big ass car. What else could you ask for? All right, I'm out of here.